in mind, you know, going further down the process, keep in mind that, that following March, you know, after the taxes have been assessed, we get reimbursed 100% for uncollectibles. So whatever was uncollected as of March, uh, right. February 28th, we get reimbursed okay. 100%. And then two and years then after that, the county charges us back. Um, so we get like kind of like a little bit short-term loan, I guess, from the county until they charge us back. Or until they take them off. And then, yeah, and, and then what, what was interesting through our review, what was interesting is that once they go through foreclosure and the house does not go into auction, because when it goes to auction, the unpaid real taxes and assessments have to be part of the purchase price. If this not goes through the auction, then the taxes and the assessments get extinguished, meaning we can't go after it anymore. That was one of the interesting, interesting thought, things that I saw when I saw the tax laws. That we, we, it's like almost like we have to write them off. We cannot collect them after it goes through the forfeiture or foreclosure auction. It doesn't sell. It technically gets, technically gets extinguished. And I mean, is there a time frame there? Okay, so it doesn't go to auction and it sits there vacant. Then eventually, a year later, somebody buys it. That what you're saying is we can never go to that person and collect, right? That is correct. Now. If, for example, say that a property, because this, this is where, um, I, you know, when I was thinking when I was talking to Paul before, when a property does get sold, like down the road, like the county sells it, then they'll give us a credit. Like they'll pay off their fees first, okay. and whatever's left over, they'll credit the city. Because you know, I'll look at the tax reconciliations that we get every year from the county, and I'll see something for like 2006, like a small positive oh, amount. Oh, so it keeps on, okay. So someone's keeping track of them at the county, but technically, <laughs> it's just technically those like those are extinguished, no one has to pay it. Right. And if you're thinking like you know, if you're a taxpayer, you know if you know if that's the, some of the rules, and you're already gone, and why would you even care? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't go under credit, not like an unpaid mortgage. As far as I know, the county doesn't put it to a credit bureau. So. Right. So let me ask you this: when mm -hmm. uh, when a house has to be cut, is someone called every time? Uh, that's more of an operational question. No, sorry. They one, go on a list. Yeah. Once it's been ordered, they go on a list. It's their responsibility to get to remove themselves from the list. Okay. There is a process to do that. So if they get cut once, we will be out there regu regularly cutting that lawn. Okay, so you get put on this list, and the company, wherever we're using, goes out and cuts it. You would think that they would send a bill that day to the city, be it computer or whatever, saying it's done. And that we bill it. Right, but they don't. Most of we were just talking when you were in the bathroom. Some of them have 30 days, they bill at the end of the month. That makes sense. Bill right away. Give them money. Well, that's not good. Jason, in your example, so I got a I got a house on my street that was foreclosed on, it went to auction and nobody bought it. It's vacant. And this summer the city's going to have to cut the grass five times. We're never going to collect on that on those bills. Um, but, but that's for the assessments that were already part of those years. Any new assessments are just new assessments. They go out, we cut, we don't get paid, then it goes onto that property tax bill, and it goes through the whole cycle again. But if somebody ends up buying that property at that point, we're going to turn around and waive it, right? We're going to turn around and waive it, yes. It's a so for every vacant property that hasn't been bought through foreclosure, we're just spitting in the wind with trying to keep that property free of debris and weeds and whatnot. Uh, for lack of a better term, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically how it is. I believe the property still, I mean, if the city, the city and the state have first, you know, right of refusal for the properties, and if, the property, if we don't, you know, we get a list every year of the, the properties that are going for auction or whatever, and if the city denies them, then it's still underneath county control. And from as far as I know, we don't bill the county for those kind of um, those, those cleanups or those kind of rules. It's a very tricky collection area. Okay, so how many individuals do you have in accounts receivable? It's really it's one, it's really one main, but we have some backups. Okay. You know, we have people who can if someone's all sick or needs help if it's a busy time, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and that is care of 20 and 21. Does anybody have anything else on those two? I've gone to 22. Um, this is for planning commission, the reappointment of Chris Simeon and Tim Witts. They've been on, um, <coughs> on there as long as I've been there, and I've been on there 
four years, so um, I can Amanda, did you ask um, Mr. Woods or Simeon that they had a, a bio or anything at all? I, I did not reach out with them. I'll double check with Kimber. Kimber and I try to work together on okay. that. So um, I'll double check with her in the morning and I can get something out. We've got three more for zoning board of appeals that we don't have. Now check with more of them. Okay. They've okay. been around for a long time. I mean, I know, I know <laughs> that, but I, I think we all have. You know, everyone else, but I know we have to be consistent. Too. Yeah. 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 Um, Just for that reason. <laughs> um, number 23 is for Shetty Farm Hay. Any questions on that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 24 is a lot of hay, though. <laughs> Oh, these are the first uh, two uh, approvals of personal con service contracts for um, some of our managers. I assume were they in TGM before or what? I don't know. They were not. Yeah. Were just, these are just renewal. Yeah. Well, no, no. they uh, previously were at will, non bargaining unit, non personal service contract employees. Oh, okay. Um, these three individuals, um, based on their scope of duties, um, certainly, you know, their positions qualify under an exempt status, and that's why we were approaching this to uh, have them placed on personal service contracts. Also, with regards to Affordable Health Care Act, um, they would certainly be well qualified for um, offering insurance from the city. So we just postpone this to what? October? No. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I guess that's my, that was my question. So what you're saying is they're currently not getting insurance? That is correct. No. Um, and, and they're year-round employees? They're year-round employees. Um, they, they work the 2,080 hours. Um, they have worked overtime in the past. Um, so we kind of did an analysis of what their you know regular salary was plus their overtime earnings made a conversion into what an exempt salary would be. Uh, it truly puts them in the, the purview of a management position. Um, you know that basically, you know they're here to work the operations of their businesses um, to cover it, uh, whatever it takes to get the job done. So um, you can see there is a waiver for any comp, you know comp time or overtime. There's a flat salary. I, I didn't see it in here, but we're, there's no in lieu of on this, correct? There's no pay in lieu. Okay. And that turnout is why the, the, I didn't know it was an increase. Um, that's because they're going to be on this flat salary now as opposed to getting over time. And I don't, well, is I don't know, I'm really scared numbers. I don't, I, thought I think with the overtime and the, the regular hours. We added them together yeah, and rounded it up a little It's pretty bit. close, yeah. Um, I would like to say, though, that with regards to the benefits, I mean, it is the, the city's choosing. So they're not locked to any uh, current collective bargaining agreement. Um, they're not locked to a carrier. They're not locked to a plan design. Um, it's coverage as stated in the contract, but it would be at the city's um, choice of carrier. Okay. Well, well, that, um, for each of them, they, they all do a very good job in their respective departments and replacing them at this value would likely be very difficult. Well, I agree. I agree. That, that some of them are too low. That's my opinion. So were they getting the, um, the, the holidays and that in advance before the contract? Because you said they were. They were not. They were not. Was it um, five holidays? Ten days. And ten, right. ten PTO days, we're calling them. So, so what about it? What's that? We're adopting now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know.